Hey everybody, it's 4.30, humidity is 43%, and it's 90 degrees. So you're probably wondering what you're seeing here. Uh, a few days ago, I mentioned that I discovered how this works, and I was kind of teetering, tottering with, you know, redoing it well typically when i say i'm going to do something i end up doing it so let's go back here with a little reminder this right here i recently discovered on the real aircraft of how these longitudinal frames work the only difference again is they use lock nuts and bolts where i've got them riveted in there so in order for this to work, you have to have these stringers. Now, as I said, when I first started building this thing, number one, I didn't take it as seriously as I do today. Number two, I simply did not have the information and photographs that I found over the past year since I've really started working on the, uh, the fuselage or the airframe. I had some pretty far away pictures of the B-36 under construction on the assembly line where this area was pretty far away. I knew that based on those pictures, there was something here that resembles these structures. I didn't even know they were called stringers back then. And I could tell there was a, really, a few really good pictures of the B-36 where I could see the rivet lines. Furthermore, I knew that bulkhead 1.0 had these rivet lines and on the other side of bulkhead 1.1, I knew that they were also these vertical, slightly tilted lines. So that's what I based these off of. However, there was a couple of pictures that showed these stringers. They were really just kind of weird angles and kind of like this so to try to stay true to that i just kind of threw some of these in here at an angle to you know if somebody looked at it they say oh well that's the way it's supposed to look i thought that these wildly angled stringers were to mount the control surfaces for the columns and the rudders because i could see in a few pictures where there were columns or illustrations of the actual control surfaces, not pictures. So that's where we're at right now. Of course, now I know, number one, this is where the fairing mounted. This frame, there is a sweat bee checking me out. This frame, the steel drops down to about right there. And then it drops down on the other side. It forms a triangular shape with an open bottom. So I've got that right. So in order to correct this problem, I simply need to derivet all these from the other side and then weld a piece of steel the entire length. And that will give me the, the true shape of the base of the canopy. And it will give me a surface to rivet or attach the, um, that is a wild bee, to rivet and attach the, uh, the fairings. Then I assumed rather quickly, and now it's gonna rain. What? <laughs> and the bee, come on, bee. I assumed that these big, thick, heavy frames continued down here and caught one of these stringers like they do on the aft end. It's different up here. They've actually got big pieces of either thick aluminum or thick steel that rivet in on the inside, which I'll have to cut into right there. No biggie. And then with fasteners going through here, that will continue down and attach to these stringers. Now, the reason for those really wacky and crazily angled stringers is to pick these guys up. So this here will have to be deriveted and probably this removed so I'll put one in here that goes like this. So this surface can mount to it. Same thing with this guy here. He'll go out like that. So this surface can mount. The good news is, is I can do these one at a time, which will not uh, 
threaten the integrity of the fuselage, which it won't because it's really beefed up under there. So you can see your line right here. Not a whole lot of work to do. I think it'll just greatly increase the, uh, the accuracy of the project. Plus, up here, the only place that the canopy is really mounted are these. Uh, I had no idea how this worked up here. I just recently found a very good high definition definition picture of these areas. So, uh, I'm gonna remove these next, and when I get around to it, probably in the next couple of days, of course, install these, rework these stringers, reattach them up front. I'll have to take the uh, instrument panel out so I can access bulkhead 1.1. I don't know if you can even see. Nah, you can't really see. There's all a whole mess of rivets where these uh, stringers attach to. But in the end, it's going to be uh, pretty accurate. Uh, this snapped from the torque of installing these, but that's no biggie. I've done a lot of reworking. These are actually going to be here a little bit more. Just gonna clean this up. Uh, then I'm gonna take that same idea that I of dropping these down with steel. I'm gonna do the same thing around here, which is true to the actual aircraft, which will give me a place to mount or fasten the, uh, the side panel fairings to. And then there's some kind of a doohickey that goes up like this, not very far. I assume that probably creates an area for this fairing to attach to. But once that's all done and these sides are done, uh, and I also found a really good early picture of a B-36 on the line that shows where these need to be so I can modify three of them to have those, the bolts on them. So right now the canopy is not attached, like I said, but a couple of those weak little bolts up there. Cause like I said, when I built that, it was just a, a simple little, oh, I'm in a B-36 canopy. But this thing is going to be as accurate as humanly possible after that's all said and done. Uh, a lot of new subscribers. I've had, I think, a thousand subscribers, uh, new subscribers over the past 28 days. Thank you so much for coming around and welcome to the show. A lot of people are asking me if I'm restoring an airplane. This is not a restoration. This is a 100% scratch build. Uh, the only things that I have not built, again, are the gauges, the seats, the oxygen panels, the communications panels, more comm panels, radio panels, that H model, RBH model uh, main panel, and just circuit breakers and press the test lamps. Otherwise, you know, and there's a few doodads like that light the Astrodome. Otherwise, everything is entirely scratch built. Uh, I could fit what is not scratch built in, you know, in a very small car. So, and once again, utilizing zero engineering drawings, no mechanical drawings, no blueprints. I have no true dimensions other than what guys at two museums have given me. And once again, as much as I appreciate and commend their work, I'm not going to sit there and ask them to sit there and, and you know, is it 15 inches or 15 and 1 16th? You know, you, you can't because they've been doing it for three years now. Or one of my guys has been doing it for three years. So that's where we're at. It's just those rough dimensions. I've measured an aircraft personally. Um, so those dimensions are exact, but I have no engineering drawings. I, um, this is just by going by pictures, especially in, you know, this area. Just by looking at uh, pictures of, you know, equivalent of stepping back and looking at this guy from across the street is, you know, grainy pictures from the early 1950s is what I've been working off of and rivet patterns and whatnot. But... That's my story and I'm sticking to it. And uh, I'll see you guys next time.